Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Kindle Fire 8 Plus. This is the newest edition here in 2023, and this is the 64 gigabyte storage option, and it has some great features. It's got an eight inch HD display, front and rear cameras, hands-free Alexa, a hexacore processor, wireless charging. It's got a micro SD card slot that supports up to a one terabyte micro SD card, which means that 64 gigabytes is expandable to one terabyte plus the 64 that it has internal. We've got three gigabytes of RAM and Dolby Atmos sound, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So here we have the device. It's got the Kindle fabric cover on it, which I'm a big fan of. I like the Kindle fabric cover on my smaller Kindle reader. And when I reviewed the Kindle Scribe, that was one of my favorite cases cases was this particular case. But you want to check out the next video that I put out after this one. It is a cases review for this particular device. So if you're looking for a different variety of cases, wondering what might be the best, definitely make sure that you're subscribed here so that you can get notified when that video comes out. So let's take a look. When we open up the Kindle Fire case here, we've got some notifications. We've got a nice HD display. We've got pretty big bezels all the way around the device, but that's pretty common with this device. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it by swiping up and entering my passcode and we'll just fold that device cover over and here is the main screen. Now this is an operating system that runs off of Android but it is Amazon's own flavor of operating system for the Kindle. And so what we have here is our home screen with uh, a for you page that has suggested apps, recent apps, recent books you've read and all that good stuff. But the home screen is where you're gonna spend most of your time navigating to different apps. There is the Amazon App Store, which will allow you to install uh, a variety of different apps that are in the Amazon App Store. There aren't all the same apps in the Amazon App Store as there are in the Google Play Store for Android. You're not gonna find all of the apps that you might want. It is a limited marketplace when it comes to apps, but there's a lot of good options as far as games go, productivity apps, and different tools that you'd be used to using. There's categories for all of that stuff here. A lot of your TV apps, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, all of that stuff, Netflix has an app for this device, so it's a great media consumption device. Now, not only is it a great device, for an adult, it also is set up so that you can utilize it for kids as well. Amazon Kids, there's an app that's right here that you can run and it produces a lot of content and information for kids that they can use that is a safe place for them to browse and navigate without having unlimited access to everything else. My kids started out on Kindle devices with the Kindle Kids enabled, and that was a great option. Now we can also swipe down, and when we go into our settings, we can manage our settings and we can switch between different accounts. Right here, I could toggle on this account and I can switch between an account for one of my kids, and you can set up multiple users. That's one of the great things about this device. An iPad doesn't give you that option to set up multiple users where this device does. So I can use it as an adult and have access to everything that the Kindle offers, then I can switch it over into a kid mode for one of my kids that I know will be age appropriate. Lots of great options here. Performance is the big question that I get a lot when I talk about alternate devices like this. You know, it's not an iPad, it's not an Android tablet, it's an Amazon Fire tablet, and the price is really good on it. So it has to be cutting corners somewhere, right? Well, the performance on this device isn't the best, but it definitely will get you by. My mom has the first Kindle Fire edition and it still works. I don't know how old that device is. It's probably 10 years old at least and it still works it still holds a charge and it still plays some of the basic games like solitaire and stuff like that so I know that you get longevity out of these devices because my mom is still using her first edition Kindle Fire so let's take a look at how a few different apps work we'll go ahead and open up a Kindle book and use this as a Kindle reader and it's very responsive and of course you have the color display which is nice so as you're navigating books some of the books have color images and Kindle, of course, has a massive library of books, and so you can use this as a Kindle reader, and it's a great option for that. On top of that, you can also use it for Prime Video and get access to all of your movies and everything that might come with Prime. And so if you have a Amazon Prime subscription, lots of content available there, as well as Amazon Music. If you listen to audiobooks, this is a great device because you can both read the books in the Kindle and you can listen to the audiobooks. If you haven't signed up for Audible yet, you can get a free book by using a link in the description below. So definitely check out Audible. I love Audible because it gives me the opportunity 
to listen to books in situations where I might not be able to sit down and read. So when I'm in the car, when I'm working out, when I'm relaxing and I just don't really want to read, audiobooks are absolutely fantastic. And I've got a massive library of audiobooks because I've been a Kindle subscriber for a very long time. You can see as I tap on my library, 760 <laughs> audiobooks that I have since I joined Audible a very long time ago. So games are another thing that you might want to use this device for as well as social media. So let's go ahead and just check out the responsiveness of this device on a game. So I'm going to go ahead and open Geometry Dash Light here and we'll give a little bit of a test here on playing through and just see how responsive the device is as far as tap goes. A game like this is relatively low resource intensive, so it's going to be a pretty simple game to play, but it's a fun game and it works really well on this device. The tap on the screen, the touch responsiveness is really good. I have no complaints. Now the audio is probably a little bit hard to hear for you, but one of the things that I noticed with the audio is it is a little bit tinny. There's not a whole lot of bass to the audio. And so that's a little bit of a problem if I wanted to use the speakers in this device to listen to music. It says Dolby Atmos, but I would prefer to use a device like this with headphones. Now, as far as ports go, it has a headphone jack. So as you can see, there's a headphone jack right here next to the USB Type-C charger. You don't have to go Bluetooth. If you're not ready for that, you can plug in headphones right there. We also have the volume rockers, and then we have the power button, which also locks the screen. Pretty decent as far as game responsiveness, but you're not really going to be able to play some of those more intense games that require heavier graphics and whatnot. You'll see a little bit of lag there, but that's pretty common with more entry-level tablets. Going into Instagram, it's pretty responsive, loads pretty quickly, and you can see that the screen is pretty responsive as I swipe up and down. Make sure to give me a follow if you're on Instagram. So as we swipe over and look at our library, this is where we can see all of our Kindle content, all of our apps, all of our games, Prime Video suggested stuff. This is where you're not seeing a whole lot of ads. You're actually seeing the curated content that makes sense for you because you're a user of these different accounts. And Prime Video, most of the time my kids are using that, so I've got a lot of kids suggested stuff in here, including some stuff that I watch. We've got some games, we've got apps, and all of that good stuff. So I like the way that this device works because it is a content device, makes it very easy for you to get in here and get to the areas that you're looking for. A device like this is great for kids and it's great for people who just want to consume media. A device like this is more than powerful enough, has a great battery life and it's gonna last a long time. Now, I said before that it has front and rear facing cameras. I'll go ahead and throw a short video that I shot with the front facing camera up so you can get an idea of the quality quality of that camera if you were to do something like a video call using Zoom or any of the other video calling apps that you can download and run on this device. Here's some video from the front facing camera on the Kindle Fire. All right, so overall, I think this device is pretty great. I'm gonna go ahead and compare it against an iPad mini as well, because an iPad mini is basically about the same size as this device. An iPad mini is significantly more expensive, but you are comparing apples to Kindles here, and that is the main difference. So make sure to check out that video, as well as the upcoming video on the different cases for the Kindle Fire 8. Click that subscribe button and click the thumbs up if you found this video useful. We'll see you in the next one.